Hi, I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through how to use Creo Parametric 8.0. Now, I've been using Creo since uh, around 1995, and it used to be called Pro Engineer. Uh, so you'll sometimes hear it referred to as Pro Engineer. So just be aware of that. Now, take a look at the screen. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on creating that part that you see there. This is a 3D model. It has a series of extrusions. That's these bosses. We have a rectangular extrusion there and then one here. We're going to put in fillets that you see here. They call them rounds. And then we're going to go ahead and put in chamfers. That's these gold areas here. We're going to also put in a through hole. Now, once that's done, also we're going to put in a shelled feature that you see here in the back. So it's a thin walled model. Let's begin. First of all, inside Creo, if you go ahead and once you get it started up and installed, if you're not sure how to install this, I do have that installation video, or just go to uh, Creo Student, Google it, and then they'll step you through. Go to File here, and let's go to New, and you'll see that there's lots of options here. The first four weeks, we do nothing but part files inside here. They're creating part files, so make sure part is selected. The fifth week, we get into assemblies. That's more than one part. That's like a, if you're making a bolt, you have a, screw, a, a, a nut to go with it, or washer and things like that. So that's an assembly. We're going to look at how that's done. And then by the sixth week, we're going to hit drawings, which is the two-dimensional aspect, where you take your 3D models and make a 2D layout of them, add dimensions, and so on and so forth. Then we go into the review for the seventh week of, for the midterm exam. And then the eighth week, you complete the midterm exam. And then we move, continue to move on and ahead. But let's just make sure part is selected. Over here under file name, we get to name it in advance. So just label it E for exercise 1. So E1. Hit OK. Now I need to shrink my screen down here to fit the... This. You normally don't have that issue, it's just that I have a very large monitor. And I'm just trying to record this in 1080p. Now, when we look at the interface here, there's usually like another uh, explorer that opens up inside there. You could just minimize that or close it. But once you get to here, we're going to go ahead and just to show you some of the options, if you go to File and Options, this is the one of a couple hearts inside Creo. Now, I, I refer to heart, them as hearts because they're kind of the control center. It's not really the, I guess you could call it the brain too, if you wanted. But if we take a look here, we have like environments. So you have the ability to set all these different things in here. And we're not going to go through all of them and take a whole day just to do this. But if you go to systems appearance, you'll see the default theme. There's a light, there's a dark and a midnight theme, uh, experimental, whatever you prefer. I would recommend for exercise one to keep it the same way I have, which is the default theme. Then you can move on and figure out how you like your interface. And you could customize it much more than that too. Now model display, the default orientation, I would like you to have it in isometric. And as far as the other options here, like shaded quality, I have mine set to 10, which is very high. You could set yours lower, depend upon the performance level of your computer. If you're working on an older computer, you might want to set that a bit lower. It, it, it can actually cause crashing if you set it too high and you have a, a weak computer, something that has a bad graphics card. Not a bad graphics card, but a graphics card that isn't intended for CAD. You might witness some things like that. But uh, it's actually very stable, though, all in all. Okay, now let's move over here to Entity Display, and you'll see, again, I have a professional graphics card, so I have mine set up a bit high. I have, anti-aliasing which smooths out the lines makes it look really nice I have that set to 4x but if you don't know what you have keep it at none okay and they have all these other options here again I have mine set to high and it's just gonna make it look better all right and then as we go to let's see sketcher now in the sketcher, one thing that I really like to have turned on, uh, first of all, the number of decimal places, let's make sure it's set to three. That's for 
for that. And then also sketch your startup. This is my favorite. Make the sketching plane parallel to the screen. Make sure that's checked on. With that off, you're going to have to orient automatically. Or uh, I should say it won't do it automatically for you. You're going to have to orient the screen. But that's a nice feature. And as far as everything else, we're just going to leave those alone. You have all sorts of abilities in here to make um, shortcuts and things like that. So, for example, if you want to zoom to fit to be an option, you could find fit and set that up for a fast key for whatever. But, in fact, actually, if we go to keyboard shortcuts, maybe we could find it really quick. There it is, refit. I have mine set to F. You could click on that, just type in fit or refit, and type in capital F, and that will automatically zoom to fit the screen, or when you hit the F key on the keyboard. Hit OK. So there you can see an example of a fast key. Now over here you can see this is actually that refit icon, so you don't really need the key if you like this, but look, it says F in parentheses. All right, now you'll see over here on the left is the model tree. The model tree contains your history of everything that you're going to do, every hole that you put in, every fillet, or I should say round, and extrusion. It allows you to edit those too just by right clicking on them. There's a little gold ball that pops up with a pencil and you just start editing them. You can change things, which is incredible. It was way ahead of its time back when this was developed in 1987. The software was one of the first, if not the first, parametric modeler out there. And parametrics is the ability to change. So if you draw something, you could actually change it versus sometimes you have to remodel things completely in older CAD systems that dated back in the 80s and even in the early 90s. All right, so we have front, top, and right planes. Now you might see yours automatically, and that's because you probably have this little icon turned on to select all for these features. And those planes are your paper that you're going to sketch on when we start working. Now, up at the top, we have the ribbon, which is typical of every Windows program nowadays. And it enables you to go through different options in here. We're going to let it kind of go through it automatically for us, but there are times we will select these things. But stay in the model area, and we're in good shape. Now, we're going to start off by drawing on the front plane. Some might ask, like, yeah, where do you? what's the best way to start? Just so you know that most everything we're going to do is designed on the front plane. Very rarely I'll have you draw on the top plane or something like that, but it's usually to orient the part in such a way that you can use it. So as an example, uh, here we have this little uh, lip balm okay, cap and everything. Now if you were going to model this, we would say this is probably the top. So if you wanted to, the easiest way to model that would be maybe to select the top plane, draw the circle for the diameter of this and extrude it upward measuring how high that is and you would be nearly done and you put your rounds on the top and any other little features you have so that would be a reason you might want to draw on the top plane because it's vertical it's standing upright otherwise if you drew this from the front plane it would be resting on its side which is fine and quite honestly uh, uh, once you get very used to this environment it, it kind of comes naturally and it doesn't really matter all right, let's go ahead. You could select from the view screen or viewport as I call it right here or from over here. But let's go ahead and select the front plane. Now when you select the front plane, you'll see you get all these options. Now there's two methods to getting started in here. There's a method that carries over from other CAD systems, which is to start a sketch first on that plane. And you could do that. Creo actually lets you do that. Um, or else you could go right to the extrude feature which will automatically start a sketch on that plane. And then once you finish the sketch, you hit the green check and it, boom, automatically starts to extrude. So if you understand the capabilities of what you're doing, that might be a more optimum solution. In fact, it actually keeps the feature tree a little bit smaller and it's more efficient. But we're going to start off what other CAD systems work, similar to how other CAD systems work. Go to the sketch tool. Now you could have clicked on sketch up there too and that would have done the same thing. Notice it automatically oriented us parallel to the screen. That was that checkbox we selected in the options menu early on. Now we're sketching here. You'll see there's all the sketch tools, very familiar. Those of you who've used any CAD system 
are probably familiar with these things, but if you're not, here's rectangle, and if you hit the little arrow to the right, you'll see there's a variety of different rectangle tools to select from. There's your line tools, arcs, ellipses, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and select corner rectangle. Now move your pointer to the center of the crosshairs. That's your origin. That doesn't move inside Creo. It stays there, and it's your anchor point, and it's excellent the way it works. Go ahead, and when you get to that center, click. And when I refer to click, I'm just talking about your left mouse button. 99% of the time, we're going to just click, which is left mouse button. Other times, we're going to right click, and that's when we usually edit things. And then the middle wheel, we'll see what that does. That does a lot of things, too. But let's go ahead and click here. Oops, I clicked already. There we go. Click and drag it to the upper right. Now, I shouldn't say drag. I... I should say just move your pointer to the upper right because some students think you have to hold down on the button, which you don't have to. Okay, when you get to the upper right here, now Creo, with the units that it's using default here, I have set to inches. And I want to show you where that's going to be and where you could change that in just a moment. But for right now, make it really small and click. Now move your pointer around here, and if you want to exit out, Find your wheel on your mouse and click one time, and it exits you out of the tool you're using. You can hit escape, or you could click on the tool as well, but uh, that by far I think is the easiest, just to middle click, which is really nice. Now let's hit that refit, or the F key, and it will zoom up for us. Now you can see the dimensions are there, and it's rather large. We're looking for a 3 by 5 dimension here. Uh, rectangle. So double click on this bottom one and that's all you have to do. You just have to double click on it. You'll see all the uh, the digits that are there and you could get to incredibly high precision with this software. Here's a little tidbit of advice. Those of you who are my students, if you go out to industry, they might test you. Like I remember getting a couple jobs where the manager sat beside me and said, let's see what you could do with this software. And he said, draw, draw a box, similar to what we're doing here. And here's what not to do. This is going to make you look excellent if you don't do this. See all those numbers there? And I see it happen all the time. I was guilty of it years ago, too. They, someone clicks on the end there, and they hit the backspace key. Okay. No need to do that. But let's. all you have to do is type in 3. But don't do this. Don't type in 3.000 if, if that's the case. You don't have to do that. That's extra work. But we can do it. Just hit enter, and, and it will work. Now, it, it's really getting small here because we had a very large part. That's okay. Now, double-click on this one here, and let me show you the way to do it to where you look expert. Rather than backspacing on that, just type in what you want. In this case, 5. And it fills it in because it was all highlighted anyhow. So hit enter. There we go. Now let's uh, hit the F key on our keyboard. If you set it to zoom to fit, it should fit now on the screen, or you could hit refit right there. All right, now it looks like there's a lot of information in here. And apparently I made a couple rectangles. And that was by accident. That was not my intention. I wasn't paying attention when I clicked, and then I clicked a second time. So that's my fault. So if you ever need to undo what we have, now those of you who don't have two little rectangles, see here and here, you don't have to follow along with what I'm doing. But Control and Z will undo this, or there's the undo button right up here. I could just hit it. I'm going to go all the way back before anything's there. Now I'm just going to redraw it. Now I could have actually fixed it, but I wanted to show you what the undo button does and how it works. Okay, I'm going to click here, drag this out, middle click one time, middle click remembers the wheel. Now I just change my dimensions, double click. Do I backspace on it? No. Type in 5, enter. Now another thing, my keyboard here I don't have it, but most keyboards have a number pad. Use your number pad if you ever, are ever tested at an organization because number pads are very efficient versus using the keys up at the top. Just make sure you hit numbers lock so it works. Okay, three, enter. And there we are. 
Now, what we're going to do next, you'll see that there are these little circles with lines in them. Those are indicating, like this indicates a vertical relationship. So if I were to ever drag that, it wouldn't move. Uh, it wouldn't sway, I should say, at an angle. You could click on those and hit delete and delete them. But there's two types of constraints inside Creo. There's dimensional constraints. That's where we see three inches by five inches. But there's also relations, or they call them constraints here. And these are common elements of geometry, like perpendicular, coincident, midpoint, horizontal, vertical, tangent, symmetric, equal, and parallel. So you have the ability to add that. That's an extra layer. And that was part of the whole parametric package back in the day when it came out. And almost everything is modeled after this today. So this is the granddaddy of parametric modelers. Now, if you like, you could actually center these and move them out a little bit just to make them look nice. Later on, those will appear if you create a 2D drawing. We don't do that until the sixth week, but you could call those up. And so if you lay them out in a nice organized fashion, that's how they're going to come out in your drawing and you'll save time. Now we're ready to hit OK up here. Now remember, you have to hit OK to end that. And now go to Extrude. All right, now it doesn't look like it's too much. It just turned yellow on the inside. But now we want to rotate your wheel. The wheel scrolling it zooms in and out. But if you hold it down like a button, watch. Do you hear that? I click and I'm holding it down. Move the mouse left, right, up, or down. And look at that. It rotates for us. Now you could also do the same thing over here if you click on the standard orientations box. If you go to standard orientation, it will bring you to isometric. Okay. Also, by me clicking, I applied the dimension automatically for that thickness, so we lost the ability to edit it for a moment. Here's how. You could do it a couple ways. You could double click on the sidewall. You'll see the dimensions will all appear. There's our 3 by 5 We don't want to alter that, but there's the 4. We could double click on the 4, type in, we actually want it 0.5 thick. Or we could grab this little ball at the end, go ahead and try it and drag it. And this is for conceptualization purposes. Now the ruler at the bottom, it's not real. it's, it actually snapped to 0.5 pretty well there. But note it's not the easiest thing. Now that's one way. Well, that's, actually, that's two ways. The other way would be over here. Right-click on Extrude. I had to do it twice there. Now, remember, I said right-click. That's the other mouse button we haven't used yet. Now, right here is Edit Definition. This takes us back, which is what I skipped, and that's my apologies. But I like to leave in these things because this is what happens to students regardless. You guys make mistakes. You're new at it. It's understandable. And... The hope is that you'll learn from your mistakes. Now you can see here that we have the extrude feature. So we have a solid. If it's a surface, if the surface is highlighted in blue, that's not a good thing. That means you have an opening or a gap somewhere in your rectangle. But if you use a rectangle tool, you shouldn't have that issue. Now here we could click on this and you'll see there's the depth options. Variable, that would be to put in like a variable like 0.5. And you put it in right there. They're symmetric, which makes that 0.5 equal on both sides. So it's 0.25 extruding out the back side of the plane that you sketch on and 0.25 extruding forward. And then there's to a reference, some sort of entity that's in front of it, which we don't have really anything in front of it. To, so we'll just leave it at variable. This will flip the direction forward and backward. And if you're wondering how I'm getting the shiny like appearance, just be aware that actually before I go any further here, I have it shaded or shading with reflections. Now they're shading with edges too. I kind of like that. Well, they're both kind. They both look good, don't they? All right. So anyhow, and then there's thick and sketch, which we don't want. Let's go ahead and hit the green check mark. And so now that's how we've controlled our geometry. We have it at 0.5. Now I went the long about's way to do that. My apologies. There, I do have. You could look up my smash videos. They're or 10 minutes we do this whole part but I don't go into all the detailed explanations and I like to tell students like hey you know if you want five minutes if you want to learn, uh, 
learn things from five minute videos. Imagine having a brain surgeon doing work on you that learned from five minute videos. Would you trust them? That's why this video is about an hour long. I know it's a bit timely. You could pause, you could fast forward it. You could do things you want to do with it, but I'm giving you a very detailed learning experience with this. Okay, so now that we have that, let's move on to the next thing. Select this face. Now, you could sketch on those planes or you could sketch on flat faces of the model that you create. So click on that face and you could go to sketch again or if you want, we know we need to extrude, we could try that. Let's go ahead and click on extrude and we'll see a difference between the two. It's a very subtle difference. And it doesn't show up on the viewport right here. Okay, now that we have this, let's go back to rectangle. Now we could draw it with lines. It's just clicking and locating the lines, but let's use rectangle. Move your pointer to the lower left again, click, and now hover over this edge. When it highlights green, you'll notice you could find the midpoint there, which we don't want. Get it below the midpoint. Click right about there. And now middle mouse button click one time. Middle mouse button is the wheel, if you have that. There we go. Okay, now we got our dimensions. Notice we didn't get a width dimension. But we did get the one f whatever here, this dimension. Now, the reason we didn't get a width is because we tied it. When that line to the right turned green, it tied itself with one of these constraints automatically for us. And that's it right there. It's a uh, point on entity. So it's locked into the edge. So if this three inch wide block ever changes to four, this will move with it. That's what we wanted to do in this exercise, but that might not be what you wanted to do in real world. So just be aware sometimes your intents change and that's called design intent. So let's double click on this dimension and do we want a backspace on it? No, type in 1.5 and enter. And look at that. Now let's go ahead and hit okay. Now look at that. It went to extrude for us. That's because we pre-selected the extrude icon. So that's one of the advantages you have here if you use the extrude button. You don't have to go later hunting for the extrude icon. It's automatically in there. That's one of a couple things. All right, now you can see here, this is what we skipped before because I accidentally clicked too much on my middle mouse button. But we could change this dimension here. Look at this, you even have the ability to flip the sides as well as the extrude. So it gives you the same options here as it does down there, which is really nice. Let's double click down here. Let's use this one, 0.5, just out of convenience. Hit enter. And you can hit enter again and it will apply it. Or you could hit the green check mark at the top. Now you'll notice we still see those planes. I don't really care to see the planes, I'll be honest. I hide them. I just uncheck this little button up here. All right. Now, let's go ahead and put, let's drill a hole into this. See how that works. Select this face right here, and you just use extrude again. Now, there is the hole tool. There also is, there's, um, we just want extrude though. We'll, we'll learn the hole tool in exercise four. So if you want to learn that, you could fast forward and see how that works. But we're just, I want to show you how to cut. And might as well make a hole. So we're we select this face, start a sketch, go to circle. Now you'll notice there's a several different ways to make a circle. We just want center and point. Move over here to the upper left and click and drag out a small circle. Click again and then middle click. And the dimensions are a little tough to see, so I'm going to drag them out. Now let's talk about why they're tough to see. And like they're this light blue color. As we change them, notice the color changes. First of all, as we hover over this, before I double click, notice in parentheses it says it's a weak dimension. A weak dimension means that if you grab this outer, it just stretches and flexes. Great for conceptual work, not great for when you're going into production necessarily. So, because that means that you never really check the dimension. You get these weird, look at, look at that. What if you forgot to tolerance that? It's going to be very costly. So anyhow, let's go ahead and type in 0 0.75. Hit enter. Now click off of it. Look at that turns dark purple now. If we hover over it, it's a strong dimension. 
So if we try and grab that circle now and drag it out, we can still do it. Let's go ahead and change it back 0.75. Now, if you really want to make sure that no one can tamper with it, this is what you do. You right click on that dimension. You got to hold it down for about two seconds, the right mouse button to do this. And there's lock. Right now that that's locked, if we try and drag it, we could only relocate it, but we can't change the diameter. Now, you, I don't go that far for everything, only if it's something that's really important. But let's uh, take a look here. Let's change this now to 1. So that's going to be offset 1 inch from the left side. Now, we have this dimension, and it's off the bottom. Let's say we didn't want it dimension off the bottom. Creo gave this to us automatically. Well, that's why it leaves it weak until you change it, because this is what you can do. Now, you could go to the dimension tool and override that as long as it's weak. If it's strong, you can't override it easily. It will actually prompt you and say that it's over defined. But watch this. Since it's weak, you click over here on that center point, select this edge, and move your pointer over to the left. Now, many of you want to just left click from other CAD systems, if you've used other CAD systems. Creo's different here, and I'm going to quiz you on this later. What you need to remember to drop a dimension is crucial. It's the wheel. Push it down one time and release it. And it releases the dimension. I know that's very different than what many are used to, but that's just the way it works. Go ahead and type in one, hit enter, and that's way out there. Now notice, uh, middle click two times. Middle clicking two times exits you out of these, uh, whatever tool you're in. So the dimension tool is no longer on. You can now grab this dimension by the numbers with the left mouse button depressed and drag it over and locate it. All right, so it removed the weak dimension. That's what weak dimensions are for. They can actually be overridden by dimensions you put in manually. So in case you don't want the dimension it automatically gives you, you could override it. Now, um, let's say you want to bring that back to being weak. You could click on that dimension and hit delete on the keyboard. And look at now, there it is. It's weak. And it's blue. All right. So those are things you can do. I'm going to hold Control and hit Z two times to bring it back to strong. So Control Z is undo. All right, we could have hit undo up here. There's also a redo. All right, let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, again, it will try and extrude us. Hold the middle wheel down, drag it to the left maybe a little bit so we could see this. Now, we can see it's adding material. If you flip the direction of the arrow, it generally has a little bit of an AI built in there. It will know to reverse and also not necessarily no, reverse, you reversed it. It will know to remove the material. It's not always smart enough though. If there's other entities that are open already there, it might not know. So sometimes you have to help it along. And the remove material button is just the way you click on that. But it did it automatically for us, which is really nice. Now, to ensure that that goes all the way through all the time, you'll notice I have it set to 0.75. The thickness of that plate is only a half inch, so 0.5. Now, one thing to note about design is that things change all the time. So always anticipate when you're designing what the intent is to be. So if it's intent is to be a through hole, make it a through hole. So if anyone ever changes it, they don't have to worry about the hole depth being wrong. Because what if they made that one inch thick? The hole wouldn't be through anymore. So here's what... To, Here's a little sampler of a design intent. Hit this little button right here and select through all. That will ensure that no matter what, it will always be a through hole, even if the plate thickens. Go ahead and hit OK. Now let's go ahead and go to the rounds tool. Click on round, and you'll see over here the radius is down below. Go ahead and type in one for one inch and select this edge right here see how it turns orange and then this edge over here now you can move these little dots to adjust the size but since we put in the proper radius it doesn't matter let's go ahead and hit okay 
Let's try a chamfer. Chamfer is right below it. Now, if you had a little arrow, there's a corner chamfer too, but we'll just use just chamfer. All right, now for this, let's set this to 0.125. All right, now here we have different ways to address this. We have angle by distance, 45 degrees by distance, distance to distance. And you'll see there's lots of options. I'm not going to go through all of them. But basically, it's up to you to choose. Like if it's supposed to be a 30 degree angle, you'd want to make sure you select angle times distance, put 30 degrees in, and then the distance you want. But since we're on a 90 degree edge that we're going to be putting this, um, we don't have to worry, really. We could keep it D times D, 0.125, so they'll both be equal. Or we could put in variables if we want. And that will automatically make a 45 degree angle. So click there, and there. Notice it travels all the way around until it hits a sharp edge, and then it stops. But filleted edges, or where the rounds are, it continues around. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, with your middle wheel, try hovering your pointer over this edge. And let's say you wanted to zoom up to that edge and scroll back on your wheel. And that's a focal point is your pointer. Wherever you put your pointer and scroll the wheel, that is a focal point. Now if you hold the wheel down, remember that's to rotate around. Here is refit. This is to zoom in to certain areas. This is to zoom back out to the last one. This is to refresh the screen if there's any artifacts left. It's a little windshield wiper. Uh, rendering options, we have scene background and such. We're not going to get into that right now. We have display style, shading with reflections. If you like that, you can turn it on. And it does give a neat little effect down below. Um, or all shading with edges, wireframe, hidden lines. You can experiment with those if you like. And over here, we have the saved orientation. So standard orientation is our isometric orientation. We set that up in the, the options menu early in beginning there. Now you have the ability to go to front, left, and I'm not going to go through any more. You also can select a face and reorient to that. So let's say we wanted to orient to this like weird angle. You could click on it and then go over here to view normal and it will go normal to that orientation. Okay, over here is for making additional views, custom views, kind of like this, see it has a camera, it's kind of like making a picture, setting it up. Perspective view gives you a vanishing point, gives it more realism, but it's not easy to work with. I would only use perspective view once you have completed the model and it's usually photo rendering or presentation purposes. And then over here, we have transparency control. We're not going to fiddle with that. And if you remember, you could turn these on or off. It's up to you. There's also this, which is the spin center. Right now, it rotates about that. If you turn it off, it rotates wherever your pointer is. OK, we're not going to experiment with anything else other than that. So now let's go ahead and rotate this and get to the backside. Take some time and get it to this orientation. Pause my video if you need to. View rotation is very important to get used to, so take your time learning it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and shell this out. So go to the shell command, set the shell wall thickness to 0.06, select this face, I had to click on it two times, select this face here, oh hold control to select multiple faces and select this face here. You could select this face if you want to remove that too. It's up to you. Hit OK. And now we have a thin walled part. How about changing some of those colors? So if you want to change the colors, now we're done with the model. If you ever want to change anything, first of all, you could remember you could double click on faces like side faces or front faces and it will give you, depending upon what you're clicking on, the relative information for it, which you could just double click and change. So like, for example, here we have five inches. Let's say we wanted to make this four. I can double click on that, type in four, hit enter, 
and we changed it. That's the beauty of parametrics. If you hit Control Z, that's undo, it should take you back. All right, let's hit Escape. Now, let's change some colors. So for colors, now not everyone has the full version. Everyone who's at the college that I teach at, you all have what I'm about to show you. Um, those of you who might be watching on the internet might not. So let's go to Applications and Render Studio. Now Render Studio gives you these really neat like appearances and such. Now turn off real-time rendering because that takes system resources. But turn on perspective, go to appearances, and I just want to experiment with some of these. Like let's try, we have polished aluminum right there. Let's go ahead and select that. Now down below here is your filter, what you want to add to it. Now mine disappears because it's off the screen, but I want you to find part. It's at the very bottom. And now click anywhere on the part, move your pointer away. It could be over, it doesn't really matter. Middle click. And actually, we could turn this to shading with reflections. It's going to give us a better appearance. And now we can see it's actually adopted that shiny like appearance of polished aluminum. Let's add another one. Hit on appearances. Now they do have some really neat colors you could choose from. I invite you to have fun with it. Select whatever you like. Now there is PTC gold. I'm going to go ahead and select that. There is actually a polished gold. I like this one though. It's really nice. And now I want to just get these specific faces. So over here on the filter, select that and find surface. Set it to surface. Now click on this face here and you have to hold control on your keyboard. Select the faces you want to color. Hold control if you select the wrong face to deselect it. All right, so we have those selected middle click, and now we have gold there. You can flip it around and do the same over here. Let's say we want some different colors over here. Let's go to the red. And I'm going to select surface. And I'm just going to select these faces here and here on the inside. And I think I'll get the side face. Hold control. There we go. Now middle click. And you've just applied those colors. All right. So there you have it. That's exercise one. And if you hit real time rendering, you'll see it will, it takes a little bit of time. But depending upon your microprocessor and your computer, you could pretty quickly have a beautifully rendered image there. Now, not all students get the real-time rendering. It depends on your learning institution, what they have procured for you. Uh, at the, like I said, the students at my community college, you all have should have the real-time rendering made available, which is a nice option. Okay, now if you're wondering where all this information is as far as a training guide, uh, if you go to vertanu1.com, go to instructional manuals, you'll find the Creo Parametric. Now it says 7.0. I haven't updated it to 8 yet. There's not a huge variance between the two, so really you 8, 7, and 6 all pretty much work the same way. There's not any significant changes that we run into just yet. Okay, uh, there are vast improvements in the functionality between 6 and 7, especially uh, as far as uh, more advanced functions, but not anything we're going to fall into. Okay, here you can see, here's the training guide. There's actually a syllabus. There's some links inside there. Um, the syllabus for my students, just be careful. It's, this is a generic syllabus. Use the one that's in D2L. All right, and these are version four. Uh, these are links to videos. Or actually, no, it's just telling me. Yeah, I guess they are links. Those are older videos, so maybe not. You could use those. They're all the same, pretty much. I'd model. I don't really change things. But here's your points totals. Exercises are worth between 10 to 30 points. Your labs are worth between 5 to 10 points. And we have our midterm and final exam, 30, or 300 and 300. So they're worth a lot. You don't want to miss those ones. 
And here you can see the interface and the discussion about the mouse buttons that we looked at and all the things like the center mouse button does, does quite a bit. Also, here's the options and properties menus. Uh, here's actually how where to go to the model properties and set your material type and as well as your if you're in inches or metric. So that will go through there. So it's right here under file and then the properties and then model properties. And then inside here, you'll see inch, pound, second and millimeters, gram, second, which you could adjust. And then there's the view options and many of the things we've already covered. But here is where the exercise starts and here's our goals. Here's click by click. So one, you click there, two, you click here, three, four, five, six, seven, keep going. And then it starts getting, uh, uh, making assumptions that you know things already later on in the training guide. Now, if you go down to the bottom, at the end of this, page 23, it says, now try lab one after you finish the model. Patterns, arrays, and mirroring will be covered in the next three chapters. So we don't usually cover those things. And I don't recommend trying them unless you watch my video. I will actually show you how to do some of those things with uh, lab 1B. But we have lab one, and there's lab 1B. Many of the exercises have one to two labs that accompany it. Always look at the end here, or you could look at that point spreadsheet that I showed you earlier on page seven of this training guide. Uh, and here are the drawings of the parts you make. So for example, this one is two by 3.5. Now, if you want to rotate this, like you'll notice you, if you right click in here, there's no rotate option, but if you download it and click on it here and then go to it, to that page, Oops. right here now we could right click and you'll see rotate counterclockwise and now you have a nice print you could print it out as well if you want 2 by 3.5 let's go ahead and do that now so I'm going to turn off real-time rendering go here to new part and we're going to call this L1 for lab 1 Hit OK. I recommend you do these on your own first or try them on your own if you feel that you can do it. And if you can't do it, just watch the video then. Front plane, start a sketch, and now go to the line tool. We haven't really used the line tool here. Draw a vertical line, it's a short one, and middle click on your wheel two times. Now double click on this dimension, type in two. That's going to get us to scale. And then click on this zoom to fit. And maybe bring this in a little bit. And hit zoom, fit again. All right, and now you could use your wheel to zoom in and out. Let's get that in closer. All right, now I'm going to go over here to the line tool and continue on from down here. I'm going to drag this across click, middle click, drag that down. I could do these all at once. I'm just showing you for new users so you get the proper scale. So that will be 3.5. I could go back to line, draw this across, and now you don't have to put in the dimensions as much. Just draw a short little line there, draw one down here. Now stay away from equal. See, notice this when you get that little equal symbol to the right of your pointer and it's in blue. Do you see that little circle? Stay away from equal. You can actually disable the equal if you don't like it. I actually like it, just not for this part. So make sure it's not equal. Remember, you could always delete those too. Just make sure you get the little vertical symbol to the right of your pointer, not the equal symbol. Click, drag this across here. Stay away from equals. Click, drag this up. This can actually be equal to that other line. So this is where it will work out okay. Now this next one, do not make it equal. Click drag it down a bit further, no equals, click, drag across, and infer to that end of that line, click, and now connect it. And now middle click one time. Middle click a second time and the dimensions will appear. Now we have some dimensions we want, like this one right here, double click. That's gonna be one for one inch. These others aren't really what we want, so we're gonna use the dimension tool to override them. So click on this, after you click on the dimension tool, click on this line here, and then this line here, and then 
Does anyone remember how to drop the dimensions? This is where it's a mind bender because it's unlike any other CAD system I've ever used. And I've used close to 15 different CAD systems. All right, the wheel, one click. All right, there we go, 1.75, enter. Now click on this line here to this line here. And again, the wheel, one click. And that's going to be 2.5. We don't need this one because it's already done. Now, how about this one right here? Click over here on the line and the middle click over here to the right of it and make that 0.85. Now click on this line here to this line here. Hover over to the right, middle click. And that's going to be 1. All right, we're fully defined. We could go ahead and hit OK and go to Extrude. Now, that, the reason why we have to click Extrude now is because I went with Sketch. Remember I told you that trick? You could start with an Extrude first or a Sketch. Now I'm going to rotate this a little bit, and I'm going to use this little ball. This needs to be a half inch thick, so it seems to lock in half inches really well. Or you could type in the value here or here. Hit the green check. Okay, now I invite you to have fun with this. Experiment. This is your chance to enjoy this software. Go to the rounds tool if you like and set the rounds maybe to maybe 0.25 or something like that and just start adding some. Oh, I have it on chamfer. That's fine. Look at this. You could take it around and you could drag the chamfer and adjust them. Now I'm going to get this backside here. Drag that. I'm going to make a really big chamfer there. And look at that. We've done some cool stuff here. We've really made this look like much more complex. And now we could go to the round tool, click over there, add a nice round there. Maybe one here. Oops. One there. That's too big. One there. And I think you guys get the idea. Hit OK. Now if you want to make this look pretty slick, go to the chamfer tool. We'll put a small one on 0 0.062. Select this edge and it should just carry along certain edges. And I'm not going to add any more. Let's hit OK. And now let's try and shell it. Go to the Shell tool. Select this face here. Set it to... Eh, we'll leave it at 0.051. What the heck? And remember, you could hold Control and select specific faces if you want to open those up. Hit the green check. And look at that. We've made a pretty cool looking part there much more interesting than what we had my students i invite you to have fun with it this is great portfolio work you're going to feel more comfortable with the software just by tinkering and if you screw it up don't worry it's easy to fix uh, well it's not necessarily always easy to fix but you could always hit the undo button and then bring it back to the original maybe save it before you do anything now here's the thing um, those of you with the labs and these, I like you to turn them in through D2L. Now, I like them as a PDF. I don't like them as the part files because I don't have the room on my drive for all these parts. So what I would recommend doing is set this to shading with edges because then I can really see it. Let's give it a, a decent view, something that looks interesting. Like That looks pretty cool. All right. Now... There's a couple ways you could do this. You could do a print, and if you do a quick print and set it to your Microsoft Print to PDF, let's test that to see if it does. Hit OK. And notice I got it centered there. OK, I'm going to go ahead and on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and call that L1. 
All right. And another thing, a perspective really adds a nice appearance to it as well. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and check that. Should be on my desktop all one. And look at this. There's the PDF. And that's what I'd like you to send to me. So when you save that PDF, go ahead and put that in the box. Now, if you can't figure out how to use the assignments area where you could upload it, uh, go ahead and just e email the first few to me. You know, I'm really flexible about that. Also, if you have any questions, email it to me. Okay, so that's lab one. Let's do the next one. Go to new and part L1B. Now this is a three by five block. And if we're looking at the training guide, which I think I already closed. Oh no, there it is. That's the next page here. So lab 1B, we got a three by five block and it's one and a half inches thick and a cutout that's uh, 1.5 wide, centered, it's symmetric. It has some holes on it. Let's do it. All right, this one, just for the heck of it, I'll show you how you could do it on the top plane and you'll see it really doesn't matter. It doesn't make much difference. Let's start the top plane and we'll go with extrude first. And again, it's up to you if you want to start with a sketch. Go to center rectangle. Now we haven't used center rectangle. That's a little arrow there. Click in the center, draw out a small rectangle, middle click, and let's make it three by five. Might have to zoom up on it. And now hit the zoom to fit or F. You can bring those in and even get it in closer. F. All right, now that we have our centered rectangle, the reason I made it centered is because it's symmetric. So it's going to be advantageous to do it this way. Go to circle, and over here, click, don't touch this edge. Don't touch the edges. Keep it away from the edges. Click, drop it right there, middle click two times. All right, let's go to dimension. Dimension the center point to the top edge. And I'm going to remember how to drop the dimension. Middle wheel button. One click. All right, and that's going to be 0.75. Now, center point to left edge, up here, middle click, 0.75, enter, and middle click two times. Now, you could actually just double click on this one, make a 0.5. Now, we want to get that in all four corners. Now, you could take your time and just add each one and add dimensions, and you will learn a lot because you're learning the software, you'll, you'll, you'll become very proficient. It only takes a minute to do it, but I'm going to show you a little trick here on how to do it using the mirror tool. Mirror tool we don't touch till exercise two, but I'm going to show you a little advanced right here. Okay, so the way you do it, you go to center line up here, right at the center, click, see how snap center, and then another one here, snap center, middle click two times. Those center lines now are used for mirroring. So watch this. Click on the circle, go to mirror, and select the center line you want to mirror across. That's it. Uh, click off of it. You could click and select both of these holding control. You could do window. It's a little tricky because there's a lot of stuff up on the screen. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just holding control, select both of those. Go to mirror and select the horizontal center line across. So we got those positioned. Notice there's no dimensions, but there's equal symbols and there's symmetric constraint. So that's taking the place for the dimensions. So if we change anything here, watch how they all update. If I change this to one, look at that, they all moved in. Let's change it back to 0.75. So they're all tied together. Now hit OK and rotate that. Let's get it to be 1.5, hit OK. Now select this face, go to Extrude, use Center Rectangle again, draw the center rectangle right up here, get snap to the edge. It's not showing me a green preview, uh, 
kind of is, but the preview doesn't seem to be working as well as I'd like it to. Middle click, make sure that this is 1.5. Now I'm going to rotate it in advance just so you can see this. Hit OK. And look, it's extruding the wrong way, but we know we want it to go one inch, but then just flip the arrowhead. There it is. And it'll give you this, it'll say it's going to remove the material. I'm going to check in the future, don't tell me, because by now, hopefully you're becoming more advanced to where you know that it's automatically doing it. The AI is making decisions for you, which in this case is a good thing. Hit the green check. Done. Now, if you want to enhance that, by all means, have fun with it. Go to the rounds tool, put some rounds in on this. Enhance it any way you like. Let's go to the chamfer tool. Now, if you add a chamfer to an edge of a hole, you've got a countersink. So you could actually use this for countersink, but the hole tool, which we're going to learn in exercise four, has a countersink built in automatically for the hole tool. It's really pretty nice how it works. So um, you could do it this way or, oops, however way you want. I'll just add those. All right, so again, file. You're going to do a print, quick print and print to PDF, hit OK. You're going to locate it, and this is going to be L1B. Hit Save. Send me that PDF file. All right, those, uh, the first one was worth 10, this one's worth five. Um, I hope you're enjoying the software, it's really neat. All these CAD softwares are great, fantastic tools. Creo is a very high-end tool it's used in aerospace, and so if you're looking for a job in an aerospace company, it's a great one to get to know. All right, and that concludes this exercise.